You ready, man? Did you hear that? Yeah. Summoning all the spirits. You it just oh. never go, 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 go. That is the most scariest thing. In this week's episode of the Lights Midnight Podcast, Chastity and Emily react to the first part of Sam and Colby's Investigating America's Portal to Hell featuring Joe Rogan and Project Fear. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. Hello, everyone. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to Sam and Colby's last video, Portal to Hell, featuring Joe Rogan with special guest Project Fear. And we are going to be covering in this episode, The Mothership, which is a comedy club out in Austin, Texas. And this is a never before investigated location. So, yeah, we're excited to see what we're going to get. As always, we have a few clips for you, and I will go ahead and say uh, we are two mediums that specialize in the paranormal. Our purpose is to shed light on what goes bump in the night, and my name is the Luminary Luna Beams, or aka Chastity. And I'm Emily, the Fine Art Medium. Yes, yes. And we're just going to go ahead and move right along and jump into the history of the mothership. The Ritz was built in 1929 by J.J. Hegman, who owned several movie theaters in Austin, Texas. It was the first theater in Austin to be built specifically for the talkies. The theater opened on 6th Street on October 13, 1929. It showed primarily first-run westerns along with country music acts who performed before the movies. The theater closed in 1964. The theater remained shuttered until 1970 when it reopened for three years as an adult theater. In October 1974, it was renovated and opened the doors as a music venue, offering an eclectic mix of programming from classical to rock and including live theater and movies. This was also short-lived and the club closed in 1975. Several other groups moved in over the years. The Center Stage Theater Group took it over in 1977, closing off the balcony to make a second separate theater. Again, the venue didn't last long, and the late 1970s saw a serious decline in the theater's fortunes, including another stint into <laughs> exhibition. In 1981, it began running as a punk rock club. Shows such as Black Flag, which inaugurated the punk era, on May 7, 1982, The Misfits, The Circle Jerks, The Dead Kennedys, Minor Threat, and others showed that there was an audience for hardcore and opened the doors for an influx of punk rock into the Austin music scene. The violence inherent to punk rock shows eventually cost the operators their liquor license forcing another closure in late 1982. The managers also began reintroducing music from Texas bands to heavy metal and very cautiously brought back a little bit of punk rock. The building has consistently been a music venue bar and a pool hall since that time. On March 20th, 2007, the Alamo Draft House Cinema announced that they would be relocating their downtown cinema, which was the original theater opened in 1997, to the Ritz. They began construction on April 1, 2007 to revive the Ritz as a movie theater. The official grand opening was held on November 2, 2007. The Ritz Theater served as the flagship theater for the chain. In 2021, Alamo Drafthouse announced they were filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. As part of the company's restructuring plans, they closed the Ritz Theater. In 2022, the building was bought by comedian, podcaster, and commentator Joe Rogan. During the following year, the building was renovated under the design of Austin architect Richard Weiss to turn it into the comedy Mothership. 
a stand-up comedy nightclub destination, fulfilling a dream and vision Joe Rogan had of providing a comedy community in Austin that will draw comics from all around the world. All right, guys. So that was a little bit of the history, just so you have a background. Uh, And I guess we also have another clip of Joe's I guess you could say what he thinks ghosts are. So we wanted wanted to include that for you because it was actually pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and you can roll that, Emily. Anything that has been discussed throughout history probably has some merit to it. And the idea of ghosts is just so prevalent. It's just something that doesn't depend on cultures, doesn't depend on geographic area. Like all over the world, people believe in ghosts. It's not specific to like one place where someone came up with it and everybody ran. No, it's like ubiquitous. It's in all of civilization. People talk about spirits and ghosts. Probably something to that. We are very egocentric to think that only conscious thinking things have memory. Obviously, animals have memory as well, but that doesn't mean that objects can't have memory. There might be a specific kind of memory that exists in buildings and in spaces and in places. And that might also explain the recurring phenomena of ghosts. What might be a part of that is like you're connecting to a horrific moment and that horrific moment burns into the building or burns into the park or burns into the space right. where it took place to where when you're there, you feel weird. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm sure you guys have experienced oh, that. Definitely. Definitely. All the time. <laughs> Too much. With different energy. And you have to wonder, like, how much of it is you playing with your mind? How much is your mind playing tricks on you? Yeah, I mean, I like his overview of how he believes things are paranormally. Um, I do want to add, though, that it doesn't even just have to be horrific events. I feel Uh, like as long as there is a lot of energy, you can still have energetic imprints. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And... I have started calling it energy shedding. So yeah. we shed energy all the time, things that mean something to us. It can be happy or sad. Mm-hmm. And I was literally just explaining this in my last live on how, you know, walking through the mirror realm when you do remote viewing, you can see things. And it's not like we see all of our objects or everything in the room. We see things that hold energy or have an energy resonance. And everything is energy, but it's a very interesting way to explain it. I can definitely agree with that and uh, pretty good sum up there but yeah so i guess um what we're going to do now is we have three clips so they are longer clips it kind of gives you the storyline um this video is like an hour and almost i say 20 or 30 uh, minutes long but we're only doing the first part and total our clips maybe about 12 minutes so we highly suggest y'all go and watch sam and colby's video the link will always be in the description box but if you, you some of y'all may have already seen it because it's got tons of views mm-hmm. uh but yeah if you haven't definitely go check it out and emily if you want to go ahead and roll that first clip we are going to discuss the ritual Mothership. Tonight, we're going to attempt to contact both the victims and the serial killer. All right, guys, so like we were talking about in the research, although there might not be a notable murder here, there was a very notable serial killer yes. that killed a lot of people on these blocks surrounding the area. Nathan Elgin. But it was unsolved, so we can't 100% say that's true. If there's some spirits around here and people want to talk, why not invite them in? So we decided to do a little <clears throat> ritual, uh, ritual. kind of like the Bloody Mary that you probably have tried at your home. Have they tried that? <laughs> I feel like I've had... I, I, I used to do it all the time. I do it right before bed. You guys have issues. I haven't done it in four years. Well, that, no, we're talking about something else, to go. We're talking about the Bloody Mary ritual. Oh! We are going to go outside right now and invite the spirits inside and maybe see if we can learn a little bit more about this unsolved mystery. Let's do it. Guys, we are here right outside the comedy mothership. These are the blocks that the serial killer would have walked around dragging the bodies of its victims. There were eight victims in 1884. We are here to invite them to the comedy mothership to tell us their story. They all tragically died right around this comedy club and a couple were like literally just blocks away. So if anyone is out here, any of these names that are written here on the paper want to come inside, tell us a little more about their story, feel free. That being said, we're gonna burn this sheet and collect the ashes of the name. Careful. Careful. Don't inhale. Oh, wow. 
Oh, oh my god, that is Dude, ow! Okay, that's an like actual fire in the alleyway. Right. Do we look like we were doing a ritual in the alleyway? You know, we look like we're doing drugs. If anyone is out there that wants to speak with us, victim, serial killer, please. There we go. Alright, hopefully this works. We'll All right, see. Now we go into the mirrors. So we're actually doing a ritual. We're actually doing a ritual. Oh man. Sorry, Joe. I've never done a ritual before, so. You never? No. Oh, oh welcome to the Sam McColby channel. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's it. First one, I invite you to speak with us tonight. Molly Smith, Molly Smith, Molly Smith. Shelly, Eliza Shelly, Eliza Shelly. Ross, Irene Crow, Mary Ray, Susan Hamilton, Phillips, Rose Washington, Orange Washington. To the alleged murderer, Nathan Elgin, Nathan Elgin, Nathan Elgin. I don't like saying that one. That's, That's creepy. That's a creepy one. Like that. I don't want to invite him to come here, but... No. Yeah, we know. Alright guys, so we're here in the room that we want to talk to the spirits. Final step, fill the jar with water. All the victims. And hopefully that means the spirits are here too. Time to start this very unique version of the Essence Method. Look. Okay, so when they're doing that ritual, immediately I started seeing this thing around the jar. It's like this black, domey type of energy that's emitting and it's attracting things to it and i drew Agreed. it yeah it's just like the jar is emitting this dark energy dome around it and it's attracting everything and anything that's around the vicinity so while i do believe it may have attracted a few of those victims it's also attracting other things as well um I don't like when they do rituals, especially right. those two. Well, because that one wasn't that bad. It's, it's like, not. But it in really general, wasn't. in general, yeah. I don't like when they do it because, you know, just their knowledge and how things works and then, you know, their vibration uh, as to why they're doing it in the first place. But this one compared to the rest of the ones they've done isn't that bad. But yeah, that's what I saw when they did that. Yeah, and I can agree to that. And I saw it twice. I saw I saw the smoke at the end of the mirror. Mm -hmm. So this is what I got. Um, I just want to state, and Emily, you can add to this because we both mm -hmm. discussed this. I got a headache immediately before filming. Yeah. I also got like this choking feeling yeah. before we started filming, and my legs started wobbling, and that happens every once in a while. And I mean, I was pre-opening, like opening up. Um, as soon as I opened up the spirit, and I took something for a headache, which I don't get headaches. But Emily, you said, you know, you had some similar things going on. Maybe not the tightening of the throat, but I had that before we started. Um, so yeah, my eyes were burning. My head is, has been hurting all day. And, you know, I knew today, like we were filming and stuff and I was just trying to get myself mentally ready all day. And so it's kind of like opening up earlier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but um last night too i felt like i couldn't breathe so that's interesting okay. and even though right now i'm in a hotel it doesn't the energy actually isn't bad here it's actually probably better than like the area where i live so i don't think it has anything to do with that and yeah i've had a headache all day i'm on two doses of freaking the dual combo of Advil and Tylenol and I do it twice today um I felt very swimmy in my head so um yeah and now I'm getting really back or really bad like back and chest pain and it's like right here on this side in the same spot but on my back yeah 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 and I can't, I always have back pain to a degree, so I can't distinguish the difference because it's not anything different for me, but mm -hmm. I can validate the headache and it was very much here and at the base of my skull and mm -hmm. then that tightening on my throat. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with the more negative energy. And I mean, I personally don't think there's anything super negative that just came in mm -hmm. because this is what I wrote down. Um, I think it's the victims. Yeah, it could be from that honestly and I, I pick up I'm pretty I think because I'm the one that did the clips right I yeah. kind of remember some of it but I'm getting a uh, mobster activity I don't know yeah. if they talk about that because I did not pre-channel me and her did not pre-channel at all for this and it's getting cold right here like mm -hmm. I just got a cold air right here but um as they were uh 
talking and I heard them say serial killers. My spirit guide said there's been many serial killers that have walked those streets. That's what they specifically said. And as soon as they started the ritual, I saw a, a man and he wasn't very old, but I saw a man and a younger woman walk up behind them and stand there. So there's validation for what you saw too. Mm-hmm. But that was immediately like they come in like that, but then they had like a, at least two more pop in, but they wouldn't, they didn't come as close. Mm-hmm. They stayed kind of back. Cause I got the vision of like standing behind a building and peeking. So they did attract something. And I see it. I specifically see a man and a woman. Uh, Then my stomach started to hurt, like in the pit of my stomach. Uh, And the last thing that I wrote down was um, when they were standing in the mirror, it's almost like I'm in third person in a way, kind of looking down. uh, And there is a black shadowy mass with them I'm not going to say it's an entity per se it's more or less an energy and it could be something like uh either just an energy a residual energy or even it gave me the uh, thought of a portal but I don't think it's a portal but Mm -hmm. I did see like that black energy and I'm wondering if what you saw with the energy coming off the jar uh like it emitted that energy Mm -hmm. if it you know, because black is absorbing, right? Yeah. So it absorbs stuff. And that's kind of what that was doing. It's supposed to absorb the energy. Yeah. So I do want to add some more because my chest pain is getting worse. And it honestly feels like I was stabbed in the chest mm. or shot. Yeah, I think there may be something in there about that or in the main video. I don't know if I included it, if my mm-hmm. memory serves me correctly, but I guess we'll see because Unless you have anything else to add, we're going to go ahead and roll the second clip. I do, actually. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of spirits in that vicinity. And that vicinity in general feels like a hot spot for things, even without the ritual. And I think it has to do with, like, criminal activity and stuff. I don't know how, like, if it's a bad part of town or used to be. But um, there's definitely some criminal aspects to the area and the energy and I definitely feel like there's a lot of spirits there actually like there's a lot it's not just like three there's a lot and it's oh yeah no there's that's just who come up yeah for sure it's there's tons of energy there because this is inner city and it's been there for a long you know what it reminds me of it's not as bad as this place but it reminds me of a lot of like the CISO Cecil Hotel and the things around the area that's kind Mm -hmm. of what it reminds me of yeah I can agree with that and trying to tune out and discern the difference of that energy maybe be might be challenging moving forward if we were to dig really deep into it because we have to determine the difference from outside versus inside Mm -hmm. so but you're not wrong I totally feel what you're saying because it's that it feels like I'm being taken back specifically to like just right now, 1970s low rider type, you know, stuff with mobsters. I feel the mobster vibes around this area. And if it wasn't, something's telling me that there are back rooms or these buildings are connected somehow by like an underground tunnel system. I don't know if that's something, Ooh, I just got that pain right there too. Yeah. (laughs) Something doesn't want us talking, but there's like some type of underground tunneling system I'm seeing that's like back rooms, back doors. Yeah. And you know, maybe yeah because it's 100 the the building itself is 100 years old but see i'm second guessing myself because i put the clip together yeah and i can't remember if they did that in the video or not but i'm getting that vision right now so i'm just going to go with what spirit says Mm -hmm. but like there was a way out yeah if they needed if they need be that Mm -hmm. may be said in the video so don't hold me to that but that's what i'm getting right now yeah because it's giving me like prohibition like back rooms where they would have secret even though if it wasn't for prohibition but it's similar where they can, if they're doing their criminal activities, they can just leave without mm-hmm. getting caught by the police. Yeah, back alley type stuff. Yep. And I feel like it's important to kind of, even though we're focusing on the inside of the place, um, when people do investigations, it can still attract things within the area, even if they're not from the inside. As long as, you know, there's any kind of spirit stuff or entity stuff and they're doing any kind of investigation, that still brings in things 
even mm-hmm. if they're not specifically looking for those that have been, you know, unrelated to that location specifically. 100% and hold that thought because you got two more to go. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yep. She might be psychic, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't, I only listened to the ritual and the Gansfield thing. Um, Because for whatever reason, I felt drawn to the Gansfield one, but we'll talk about that later as to why. Yeah. All right, next clip. We're going to be doing what is called the Gansfield experiment. Combining that with, as you guys' favorite method, the Estes method. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! The Gansfield experiment is meant to put someone in a trance. That's what we're going to be doing with Colby here. So not only are we going to take away his hearing by having these noise-canceling headphones as well as the spirit box going on, but we are going to put two ping-pong balls over his eyes, shining directly a red light into his eyes, putting him in some hallucinatory state. Hopefully you get influenced by the environment and then we'll see visuals along with whatever you're hearing through the Estes session. You ready? Everybody needs to practice rock, paper, scissors when they get home. <laughs> Tape. Let's Do you get it. like your eyebrows? I hate them. All get right. them off. Good. Are you doing my hair too? God. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing it right on your hair. There's going to be so many memes of this. Please <laughs> screenshot <laughs> this. Don't screenshot this, guys. Screenshot Please. this and no, tag us no. on Instagram. Yes, all right. So everyone. He's good to go. All right. Interesting. Hey. Hello. Hello. Who are we speaking with? Murder. Like the, the murderer, murderer or a murder victim? Mister. Were you murdered here? Can you tell us how you found yourself here? Now. What can you see right now? Can you describe what you're looking at? Oh, God. If you want to enter the circle, be able to see where you're at. Warning? What type of warning do you have for us? He wouldn't stop. I was up to no good. Oh, what? What's your name? Couldn't hear him. He was known to be like oh, really silent. So Can he like take his shoes off when he walked into the houses? Yeah. Just me? Quiet. What was this building used for when you were still alive? He will find. Who's he? Can you give us a name? One year. He killed everybody in a span of one year. And the stat is. Are there multiple of you or just one? Ooh. Me? That night. You want to check that quick? Or is that just the person? Nightmare. He was still alive. What do you remember about that event, that time? Murder. Were you murdered here, or were you someone who was murdered outside of this building? 4,500? 4,500. I wonder if that's an address. Do you recognize where you are right now? I like it here. Did we bring you here tonight? What happened? Are you confused why you're here? This is new. This is new. new. Like, this is a new place. Do you think it works then? So you've never been in here. This is your first time in here. Whoa. 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 <laughs> first of all, I'm seeing some weird... Yeah, can you, like, before you take everything off, can you describe what you've been seeing? At first it was just completely red, obviously. And then I just started seeing, like, just black shadows moving around everywhere, but I couldn't make objects out of it. It almost seemed like the black was coming in like a circle, like I was about to faint or something, but then it would get all red again. There was no, like, specific objects or anything like that that, like, popped up or anything. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> This looks super weird now. Everything is green. Everything is green. <laughs> really? Yeah. That was crazy because the initial thing, it was almost again like that third person, like I'm in that room with them, but I see a black shadow, but it's it looks like a restroom sign, man. <laughs> <laughs> and if I if I look further, I'm sure I can look more into it but again we're channeling as we go so that's what it looks like but i see that black shadow man kneel down in like if uh colby's right like at his head and put his hands on his shoulders to start start to seed uh imagery which we know that colby has some type of gifts that's been proven in some of his other videos that I've watched, and I agree with that. I think he definitely picks up a lot of energy, and so does Sam. They're meant to do this work for 100% of reason. Um, That's why they are the biggest, you know, paranormal YouTubers, in my opinion. One of them, at least, are the biggest. Um, 
but yeah it's like he's seeding thoughts or memories or stuff into him while responding it's the same spirit's telling me it's the one that was responding but i don't know if it i don't think it was necessarily physically there it was almost like in another obviously in another realm is kind of what i'm getting Mm -hmm. and as i sit there i go from being on the stage and i go back to like almost the back of the room and there's there's black like shadow people sitting in the seats watching Mm -hmm. let's let's talk about the gansfeld uh experiment (laughs) so yeah it's a german term that means whole whole field um this assessment is used by parapsychologists to test for extrasensory perception or telepathy both peripheral and auditory senses are blocked from outside stimulation, which prevents external stimuli from influencing the type of information that the person undergoes the assessment receives. So ping pong balls and red light are used, um, but this will work pretty much with anything that can block a person's peripheral or vision. And um, apparently, Apparently, I've been doing this and not realizing it when with I, your blindfold <laughs> with with my um blindfold. Yes, <laughs> you're handy dandy notebook <laughs> blindfold. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I had been using earplugs and um headphones, specifically these headphones, um because they can block out noise. <laughs> right. But um, the whole point of the experiment is to block out your physical senses so they don't influence information that you may be gathering subconsciously (laughs) which is or conscious consciously because you want to tap into the subconscious yeah well it could be both because like you can gain information from the outside and not realize your brain's processing it too yeah but um yeah (laughs) That's what I've been doing, apparently, and not knowing that's what I was even doing. But yeah. um, you, Chastity, have got me away from it and have me not relying on it anymore. So I actually haven't been using my blindfold or my ear things as much. Um, I'll and use it, it still works just as good on it. Yes, it does. I do it. For hey. med- I'll do it for meditations just so I can get myself focused but I don't need it for channeling anymore. So yay. yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And you know, the ping pong balls, what that does is allow the red light to seep through. Yeah. So if it's so strong, the ping pong balls, you'll still get that. Cause the whole, I think the whole, there's something to do with the red, like the red yeah. light emits a certain frequency mm-hmm. that's closest to what they would consider to be like infrared ghost level or it's something yeah. to do with the light because i've seen some of these devices like people put on their heads like helmets and i think it was in 28 days haunted where they did it at the um madison dry goods store which me and emily covered in season one which is wild place and mm-hmm. i went there <laughs> so um i yeah. can validate that is definitely haunted and i still need to get out a video for that it's like mm-hmm. two three years later i want to say know? though when i put my blindfold on my eyes are not closed they're open like colby's is when he's has the ping pong balls over his eyes my I eyes his are... eyes ain't open with the ping pong balls over them or maybe he might have them closed yeah i but... think they're closed because that would be painful <laughs> okay be like, well i think my so eyes, my eyes are open in the blindfold so <laughs> for sure so yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty cool. I mean, it's a neat experiment and I definitely would like to do some sensory deprivation stuff when I go do my investigation this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot and, you know, it's a cool experiment and it, it literally allows you to tap out, like she said, all of that kind of stuff. And that's probably why he was starting to see the black shadows because when you like for me and Emily, when we close our eyes, we can see things. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's just normal, but for the average individual, like we have learned how to block out our senses and Mm -hmm. basically simultaneously receive information. But I can say the person that they were communicating with, I believe it was multiple people there, 100%, but the energy of what they were communicating with was either 
somebody relaying the energy because when you pass over you can get access to a lot of knowledge depending on what type Mm -hmm. of spirit it is or how far uh, advanced they are basically because spirits actually learn on the other side and we're talking about earthbound or maybe ascended beings and even descended beings I still don't feel it to be extremely negative Mm -hmm. um I don't know if it was I don't really get the feeling it was the actual murderer that's not the vibe I'm getting personally I don't think it is no I think it's the spirit that's relaying the information because spirits know how to tap into the Akashic Records some of them and they will bring forth that information so uh, but I can definitely say there was something that crouched down over top of him I don't know if he felt that or whatever but and I think he said I don't know if he got dizzy from it but like as I'm sitting here tuning into it it's like almost like I'm and yeah. another thing is I had to record the intro to this video like four mm-hmm. times because I kept wanting to laugh or mess up. And I'm yeah. totally, I think I'm tuning into the, the comedy part of mm-hmm. it where everybody laughs. So, I mean, it really, when you raise the vibration of a place like that, there still can be things that hang around. Don't get me wrong. There is res- residential ghosts. Like I definitely see a woman that was like some type of host or mm-hmm. management. Um, I definitely see like a mobster guy and like a pen. You would think maybe this is just spirits cue, but like a pinstripe suit. And then there's a guy with something messed up on his face mm-hmm. that just come through for me because I'm trying to tap in a little more. I almost see, I don't know, Emily, if I say this, you'll start to tune in or pick up on this, but it's almost like his, I I got this YouTube, I got to be careful, but there's something really injury messed up about this side of his head. Like, Mm -hmm. maybe that's why we're getting the headache. Yeah, I think so. Because it's like, it's messed up. I I mean, we can't really insert anything to show y'all what I'm talking about, because it's yeah it's pretty grotesque but he's not he's not negative um it may even be a fractal of a soul uh that's there but i see him they're all they're like coming in one by one they're just standing Mm -hmm. like i'm not getting overwhelming energy right it's It's just stagnant it's not really active right and it makes sense that they provoke they not they didn't provoke provoke but they like did things to bring in that energy Mm -hmm. and i think when they did that ritual it's not the ritual itself it's their intention that Mm -hmm. they brought stuff in so i can personally i'm sure emily will agree validate that they did bring in something to joe Mm -hmm. rogan's mothership (laughs) so (laughs) beam me up scotty let's go Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a lot of um, energetic imprints and like residual energy of the com like the comedy club itself, and like shadows sitting in the seats and just hanging yeah. in that area. But they don't seem like active, active. They're just there. Yeah. 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 And it's funny. <clears throat> I don't know why, but. There's something from like, if y'all ever seen Z Nation where huh. all the zombies get in a ball and there's like yeah. arms and legs and they roll yeah. down the aisle. I literally just saw that out of nowhere and I don't know why, but I kind of just want to leave it <laughs> and move on <laughs> because it's making me laugh because, yeah. it's, you know, that shows comedy too, but I don't know if it's, it's more like, yeah, it's like residual energy mostly, but there are spirits there again, Uh like Emily said, I agree, are not extremely active, but that may change, your opinion may change since you hadn't seen the next one, right? I didn't channel, but I do know they talk about a little bit more specific things. I don't remember exactly what, because it was last week and I've done like 17 lives and 17 Mm -hmm. jumping jacks through videos and all kinds of stuff. But Mm -hmm. if that makes sense, I've been very busy. So um, I think that's all I have personally for this clip. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So this is the green room. This door is at least partially modeled after the door in John Wick. Because we wanted to have a place where people... Oh! oh wait, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Find out <laughs> that's you are awesome. to be allowed in here. <laughs> that is terrifying. So who is allowed in here? Comics. And there's a code. That's it. Uh, no no we can code fit in. All right. So someone was murdered in this room. I think someone was definitely shot. In a hundred years, in a rock and roll club, a nudie movie theater, and a pool hall. Someone died. Someone died. Yeah. Someone died. Yeah. Someone. Well, we'll find out. I was going to say, that is our job. 
<laughs> Do you ever have anything happen in here? Any of the comments? Well, everybody that works here says that it feels like the building's alive. And that was immediately from the moment we first opened the club. It's like the building feels alive. It's burned into the, the rafters. So there's something about it. And there's something about all old buildings. I, I think they do contain some kind of memory. Even when we first opened, it felt like it was open forever. It was like the Overlook Hotel where Jack Nicholson is like, yeah. 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 It seems to give me that vibe down there. Yeah. yeah. It's like well, the that was modeled after that. Was it? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. perfect. Good call. It was modeled after the Overlook Hotel oh, okay. bar. And no one has investigated this place? No, no, no. I had to get you guys here. Yeah, there we go. Well, thank you for inviting us out. My pleasure. <laughs> Let's ask some questions. Let's do it. So we're here at the green room. No way. Okay, we, we've been just chilling for like 10 minutes. Immediately. Okay, can you step away from that little red light? <gasps> if there's something actually here, could you please step away from the rim pod? Maybe let's try resetting it? Yeah. That was so quick. I, I don't know, it might just be the way I've set it up. Try number two, try number two. If that was actually someone here. No. What the fuck? Wait, it's going freaking going out. It's really freaking out. So let me turn this off one more time. Third time's a charm? That was very bizarre. Let me see. Third one time's a charm? Time. Dude, what? This is an ovalus. It's just going to generate words based on EMF frequency. We'll be able to hear words. Like we said, if you want to come up... Erase. If you want to come up to this device, tell us your story. We disturb. We disturb the wicked. We disturb the wicked. Myself. We disturb the wicked is myself. Skip M total. What was that? I saw that. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're not reacting at all. No, yeah, we can see them, guys. That was just a big thud. It was like, and then boom. Was that you giving us an obvious sign? Paula, if that's your name? Can you do that one more time? Show. Show. Yeah, showing an obvious sign. What? If you want to make yourself known, can you just come up? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, group. Okay. I'm gonna show your group. If you're talking about a group of people, can you show yourself to our friends over there? Can you give us a word to maybe confirm more about this murder? Friends. 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 Isn't Sam and Colby wait, in the wait, green room? Wait, 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 in. In? Isn't Sam and Colby in the green room right now? Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. So friends friends are in where friends, is murder? Friends in murder. Okay. Friends are where this person was murdered? <laughs> which is the green room, which maybe would add some credibility to Joe's story. It sounds like we're talking to the murder victim that Joe was referencing. Yeah, like it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be referencing this jar. Nothing's going on around this jar anymore. This could be something else. Yes? Was that like a whisper? Let's debrief really quick. Okay. Okay, so Gracie confirmed perfectly that we're talking to her. And that she came from outside. The ritual worked, and I think we did bring the victims into this comedy mothership. It kept saying, like, secret and stuff. I, I don't know if, like, these victims or Gracie would even know if anybody died in here, right? Yeah. It's, it's completely unrelated. Bruh. I literally just witnessed a fucking murder. Like, I'm seeing someone getting, like... They have their back turned, and then a person comes up behind them and just starts going with the knife in their back. I think it was, a, I've got betrayal. Yeah. And I think a friend did something to uh, another friend. Mm hmm It was yeah. betrayal, bad business deal. Yeah. And it's giving, like, they knew too much, and they w didn't want any loose ends. Yeah. It's it's definitely over drugs because as I'm the first yeah. and foremost, it's like I was back in the seventies and I get that disco ball or that multiple rainbow color ball that's like it's a ball, it's got the circles all over it with a light in the middle that spins. Yep. And I'm getting that, but I'm getting colors. Like there's a lot of um psychedelic things that I've been taking in this building mm -hmm. because when I've done this before with uh, another channeling I'm getting, I'm going to release on my, on my own channel. And I think this person took those types of things at some point And I kind of like get a pick up on that and things get real trippy, but everything was blurry. Um, yeah. So it was, I think it's already right, getting sidetracked. I'm not, I didn't mean to interrupt, but betrayal of bad business deal of a friend is kind of what I got. So, yeah. And then of course, them pulling in information from spirits outside of the building, <laughs> which is what I said earlier. Um, I don't know if I would say they're, 
I mean, I guess you could say one or two of them could be victims, but I don't think all of what they're communicating with are even related to the murders. Maybe yeah. just one or how oh, I'm getting a burning sensation in my back now. Mm. So, yeah, I it I don't I still think it's not as active as how they're portraying it in the video. Because they, you know, they edit their video to, you know, cut out all the dead space. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, they, I think they had a slower night. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had a slower night for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I've got to say. Yeah, so I just, I keep getting a lot of, like, drug use, um, and I also get the area had a lot of pissy performers or mm -hmm. something like that. I see people in the green room, like, bossing other people around. It's a lot of residual energy is what I'm saying, and um, there's also, there's definitely that girl spirit, like, she's sitting on the couch. I see her sitting there, like, with her legs crossed, like, like, yeah. I don't know. Um, and she's just kind of hanging out watching. There's a lot of watching spirits in this mm -hmm. uh, particular place. And again, I don't think they're all associated with that. But when you were talking about the potential murder victim, um, it's almost like I see two men. At first, I see one man grab this person under the arms and drag them. And then I heard back room. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there was a, a tunnel or something that they could get out, but I keep feeling like if anything happened, also I got overdose. Yeah. I, I definitely be, got that. I think the lights could be affecting my eyes in terms of like why my eyes feel weird and burning. Cause if, you know, if it's a nightclub, they got the special ambience lighting and, or like the rotating lights and things, those usually mess up my eyes. So, right. Right. And that makes sense. And, but you know, as far as like the energy do, I, I, I do feel like there was a spirit there and I feel like it was a girl that was in that room, but she looks um, fairly modern. If not, I would say not super modern though. If I had to put a date on it, it'd be between the 1980s and like the I was 2000s. Getting, I was getting 80s. Yeah. Cause she's not wearing anything like super, um, period dress and i mean just in any period mm -hmm. in history it's just normal clothes that could pass off as today but maybe mm -hmm. not like 2024 but yeah. yeah 80s to somewhere in the 2000s uh maybe even 70s potentially but she's just like kind of an average chick also i just heard girlfriend mm -hmm. hmm. and i also this is might be triggering but i feel like there were people that were how can i say this for be, to be I guess trigger warning there were people that were coaxed out of that girls that were coaxed out of that place mm -hmm. um that were hurt after by who they were coaxed out with I got that I pick up that happening little um, dream which, spiking action yeah something kind of like exactly what I was thinking something like that um just a lot of like it's it's really you know it's it's layers of mm -hmm. energy and as we go back i mean we could even probably get more and go back and back and back but at the end of the day i would say definitely there are spirits there there's nothing really malicious though and again mm -hmm. oh, God, i just saw that guy again and the back of my head started hurting he was pew pewed mm -hmm. i was and thinking that too ah he's hurting <laughs> mm -hmm. but um yeah i mean that's really all I have to add about that particularly. Um, I know we have one more clip and this is kind of like to sum it up with their trip and then we'll come right back and sum it up for you guys. Mm -hmm. EMF and Music Box was picking something up in the bar, but maybe it's just the spirit that doesn't want to talk to anybody. Maybe it's like a residual haunting here instead. More like a trapped memory and less like a conscious spirit. Other than the ones that we brought in from outside tonight. Exactly. So how do we get them out? I was going to say, we can't leave this place haunted. So maybe we go back to the guys, complete the ritual, send them away. All right. On the count of three, say thank you and goodbye. Three, two, one. 
Thank you, you and, and goodbye. goodbye. Especially Gracie. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Gracie. Thanks, Gracie. Thank you, Gracie. Here we go. <laughs> On to one of the most demonic and haunted places in the entire United States. Apparently a portal to hell, too. You know what else is a portal to hell? This ass. This ass right there. <laughs> Yep, that was that's a good old Sam and Colby humor, and then you add Project Fear, and it makes for a pretty cool video. I have not watched past that, but we will be doing more clips. Mm -hmm. Super excited about the Bobby Mackey part. I've never looked into that place, but I am aware of it. Overall, um, I sit here, and I can validate a lot of the stuff that they actually experienced. I mean, or I feel like some of the things like Gracie, I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Cause again, we cut out some of these parts, but I wonder if that's the girl that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Possibly. I don't, I don't really get a name. I don't always get names. It's not my best suit. I can do, you know, many other things very well, just not the name part sometimes, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, super interesting location overall, all the laughter, all the fun brings in a really like positive vibe, um but there are ghosts there there's ghosts all around there so mm. i mean emily would you say that it is haunted i mean if you think about it no matter where you are it's haunted do, do, do. Do, do, do. <laughs> um you're never I alone i feel like with the ritual it doesn't quite matter <laughs> no nah. like how they ended it they're still there like because they were always there yeah and if anything, it just kind of, I don't know, made them more, what's the word, acknowledged or more like, I don't know. I was thinking aware. Like aware. aware. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. Um, I, there was the bar. They investigated the bar. They got some things there too, but I left that out again. It's like... 12 minutes of 30 or 40 minutes so guys go check it out overall i do think it's technically considered haunted there are some spirits there in my opinion i would be very curious if there's back rooms or tunnels that can go somewhere mm -hmm. else in that city and if they've been covered yeah so Shizzle. yeah because i just times two through those videos to get these screenshots yeah. or these recordings for y'all so mm -hmm. um and i'm i've been aware of the mothership because i watch some of the comedy stuff online every once in a while uh but yeah very cool location and emily do you have anything else you want to add before we go yeah i mean i second everything you're saying and there is a lot of residual energy and i still think that area in general kind of pulls in maybe some negative activity just based off of the vibration um, and past energies that's kind of been imprinted. So if there's criminal activity, it might attract more criminal activity. And I feel like there is a lot of drug use in the vicinity, not just like inside the bar or the comedy club, but I feel like there's a lot of drug stuff on the outside, like around like neighboring streets and things. Yeah. More than likely. It's a big city. Very, probably yeah. very accurate. I don't know exactly where it's at. I'm pretty sure it's a huge place because Texas, mm -hmm. I know, is huge. Yeah. <laughs> Driving through, it's crazy. But yeah, and definitely there's some, there's some spooky stuff, but nothing extremely like yeah. evil or dark or anything. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. So uh, I guess until next time. Pasta la Peace. pasta. Wee. Hey, if you have a haunted story you want to share, you can email us at lights at midnight podcast at gmail.com. Get in touch with us there. We'd love to hear from you. We really appreciate y'all uh, hanging around and checking it out. And yeah, thank you so much. We are super excited to bring you some super awesome content. We really appreciate you guys checking us out. Thank you to all that took the time to listen to this week's episode. Your support means the world to us. And remember, all of us have the ability to shine brightly and shed positivity, even in the darkest of places. Stay safe, stay well, and light it up!